Hey everyone, as some of you may know, I love sharing a lot of educational content here on X and different places like YouTube. Whenever I'm preparing content, typically that would involve doing a lot of research, reading papers, you know, reading blog posts and trying to gain insights into what is working and what is not working in the field. I also do a lot of like consulting work and I also gain a lot of insights from there. But typically I would be gaining insights from different places and trying to put and condense that into one place. Besides the research, part of that process will involve preparing slides and preparing material for our community and our students and our learners. And so I'm always in the hunt for tools that can help me become very productive in this process of taking the research and producing high quality presentations for our students. So I've been doing a little bit of digging and I've come across a really amazing tool called Gamma. I've been talking with the team. I've decided to partner with them on this post because I think this is an amazing tool that can accelerate this process of of building visual presentations for your audiences. So for this scenario, we have this Building Effective Agents blog post from Entrophic, and they share here some insights that they have acquired on building products based on agents. And I think you should definitely go and read this because it has some really good information here. Now, the question is, let's say as an instructor, if I wanted to build a quick presentation about this just to gauge the interest of our learners, how do I go about doing this? So this is a blog post, this is online and there is a link to it. So you can do this easily with this Gamma tool. So let's go directly to build a presentation about everything that was covered here. I'm gonna show you like the process of preparing a very short presentation about this. So here I'm in Gamma and I have all of these Gammas. And what I wanna do is I wanna create a presentation. There are different ways how you can do this here. You can do this within Gamma. So there is new from blank, you can import, uh, or you can create one with AI. And what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna explore how to use generative AI and all of these image generation tools, these LLMs, to create a very compelling presentation for any material that you have. In my case, I wanna do a presentation based on these concepts that I learned about building effective agents. So how do I do that? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna focus on the AI feature here. I'm gonna click create new and then there's different options. So you can paste in text if you already have that. You can generate something as well and that's basically gonna leverage the creative part of the AI system or you can import any material that you have and we do have that already. So I'm gonna click on the import file or URL and there are different options. You can upload a file if you already have a file. So this is great for instance for researchers, people that already have like maybe a research paper that they wanna present for some upcoming academic conference or something like that or you can import from Drive as well if you have a Google Doc, or you can also import content from a URL. So I think all of these features are pretty amazing. And notice that this one is in beta. So I'm gonna hit import from a URL because I have the URL already. And here I'm just gonna go and paste my URL. So I wanna build a short presentation on all of the ideas that were documented here in this particular blog post. So I'm gonna import. And so now I'm given these options, right? I could create the content as a presentation, web page, document, or I could do some kind of social media content. There are all of these options. But I'm going to focus on presentation because, again, that's the most common task that I go through on a day-to-day -day basis. So I'm just going to hit continue right here. And then it generates this, what's called the prompt editor. So within here, we have all the information that has been scraped. Basically, it has scraped the entire website here. And from here, then I could decide to build a presentation from this. So you get to select here in the prompt editor how you want to summarize this content when it comes to producing the presentation. So you can say condense. For instance, I'm going to keep that there. And then then if you want detail, text per card. Okay, I'm just gonna leave it as detailed because I want a lot of details here and that's gonna be useful for my audience specifically. And then the output language should remain the same. And then you have uh, these options as well. So images and so forth. Down here, you have the number of cards that will be generated from your content. This will decide how much, for instance, slides your presentation will have. And in this case, it's eight cards. So I'm gonna start with that. And then I'm just gonna hit continue. So in this part, you get to pick a theme. And here I get to select the theme. Now, I usually go for the dark themes. So I want to select a dark theme here. I'm going to select this one, Borealis. And then I'm going to hit generate up here. And then the presentation basically is now being generated using AI. And you can see that it's generating all of these images here. I may not like this image right here and you can always change it, right? You can always go here and you can edit it as well. So you can remove this and add your own image. But anyways, so you can see that it's generating all the different cards. So I think it has generated the second one. So this is the beginning of the presentation. It has a summary of what it is. And then it says defining agents and workflows. And then it has what's an agentic system, workflow, and then different definition 
information for agent as well. And then it says when to use agents. There is a section in the blog post that talks about this and some of considerations like simplicity first, workflow versus agents, things like that. And then it has this image that it has generated as well and is using some image generation tool to do this. Now, if you're not happy with this image, you can always replace it, obviously. But, you know, when you're doing presentations, it could be really useful to have something like this where it's generating an image for you that's representative of what you're talking about during that presentation. And then you have the building blocks here and you have this nice little diagram here. So that's really cool to see as well. So augmented LLM retrieval tools memory. So that's the concept of augmented LLM, right? Where you have tools, retrieval and memory. And then you have these kind of workflow patterns as well. And it's using some of these nice little icons. So prompt chaining, routing, parallelization and orchestrator workers. Then it has something about autonomous agents. This one is a bit better. I like this one. And then it has agents in practice, some use cases here. And then the key takeaways, this is the end of presentation, I guess, is the eighth slide right here. You can see that this one is not even that accurate. So just be careful when you're using the image generation options that some of the text might not be accurate. And this is something that you can replace. You can actually model your figures and designs based on what the AI image generation tool has generated for you, right? So the way how I would approach this, I would go and recreate some of these nice little uh, boxes here because I really like the design here. I actually like the suggestion. The only thing is that the wording here and the spelling is incorrect, but with image generation tools, that's definitely a challenge and this can only improve. So that's how I would approach this. If you want to continue editing and continue working, and adding to this presentation, you can also do that, right? So first of all, you got a presentation pretty quickly here generated by the AI system here. And now you have something that's already like in the draft mode, right? And you can continue adding to it. So I'm going to show you an example of where I can add a few more details to the presentation. So for instance, what is this concept of prompt chaining? I want to go a little bit deeper into that. Routing, that's really important for my students. They have been asking me about this. They have been asking me about prompt chaining, routing, and so on. And I can add more sources as well, right? So I only added a URL, but I can add also sources from different parts of the web as well, like from papers, things like that. Anyway, so I'm going to show you a basic example here of how I can add a blank card. So I'm going to go and add one. So you can see I'm starting from scratch. So firstly, I'm going to focus on prompt chaining just to show you the example. So I'm going to copy over the content here. Okay. So it's going to be the entire content. And I'm going to show you how to leverage AI for this, right? So this is just copying over the content, but you can use AI to summarize this content further, right? Because obviously it would be hard to actually present this entire thing. This is a lot of content, a lot of details, and you want to summarize that and condense that in a way that's more appealing in a presentation. So I'm going to say here, prompt chaining, and then I'm going to enter. Okay. And then I'm going to paste my content here, right? So this is the entire content that I pasted from the website, right? We don't want to reuse that. The whole idea of doing this presentation is to make it more summarized and obviously adding your own inputs to it as well. But I'm going to show you here how I can summarize this very easily with the AI. I'm going to go up here and then I'll tell it to make shorter or simplify the language. In fact, I will select simplify language and you can see that it's going to work on the content itself and then it's going to try to simplify what I gave it, right? So it's going to say prompt chaining breaks down a big task into smaller tasks. Each step builds on what came before it. You can add checkpoints along the way to make sure everything is working as planned. So this is the entire process that is showing here with prompt chaining. And then it has some more details about when to use this workflow and examples as well where prompt chaining is useful. Now, if you're not happy with that, you can always use some of the other options. So for instance, I can go here and try to make it shorter. So I'm going to select make shorter. So it's now it's condensing again. If it's too much content, obviously this looks like a lot of content. So I I think this one is a lot better, right? It's straight to the point. You can be further summarized if that's what you choose. But anyways, I'm happy with this. And you can always go back to the original, right? You have the original here and then you have the condensed version. So you can always compare to see the changes and you can always add stuff to it. You can add your own insights. You can add your own content to it. Obviously, if this was a presentation that I'm doing for my own audience, I'll be adding my own insights as well, along with some of the things that I've been learning from this blog post. That's kind of the idea of how I do presentations. But this already has given me a good jump start to building a presentation around this idea of building effective agents. From here, I can continue adding more slides. Maybe I could continue adding more information about routing, for instance, parallelization and all of these different concepts. So one thing that you can also do here is you can click on this out from template and then you can choose some of the cards here. So you can, for instance, if you want text and image and you wanted to separate the text and image, so now you can see that the image is here. So for instance, in this case, if you wanted to add the image on the right, 
right hand side, you can always choose one of those templates. And then you can prepare a presentation, however, right? So here you can upload an image or you can paste the image URL. As I'm doing this, it's very important to note as you do presentations that you reference whatever material you're using, right? So you cite the material. That's really important as I do this. I'm going to do a second one. So I'm going to do routing. I'm going to copy the image address here. Then I'm going to go back to my presentation. And then here, I'm going to upload image. I'm going to paste the URL to the image right here. So you can see it's there now. And then I can close this. So you can see that it's nicely put in this little box right here. And then I can continue to add content here. So this one is going to be about routing. And let's use the same approach that we used previously with the previous slide. Now, I already went through this. So as I'm summarizing some of these key ideas in this particular blog post, I already know exactly what is correct and what is not. Obviously, you have to do the reading. You have to verify the information. It's an LLM doing the summarization. So that's something to keep in mind because there are issues of hallucination and things like that. And so it's important that you review view what the AI is generating as well. So I want to condense the text and then this is what I get. It even added like some nice icons here for me. This is amazing. Like it's doing so many things for me. It's understanding what I want. It's even understanding that I need this to look a lot more presentable. And from here, I could continue summarizing this further. I can reward it myself as well. But using the AI to build presentations like this, you can see that it has a lot of potential. It can definitely improve the speed at which you create slides and presentations because obviously this is a very tedious process and can be super time consuming. The use of generative AI for things like this is not to replace your entire process. It's just to augment how you build presentations, right? And this is something that I see myself using a lot. Like I can definitely find a lot of use for this if I wanted to, again, do a quick presentation on some concept that I found online or maybe even my own books that I write, my own blog post as well. So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. If you work a lot on presentations and things like that, definitely check out the tool and give it a try and let me know what you think. I think this is super exciting. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.